Uh, Israel is known as a land of milk and honey, uh, but in the last couple of decades uh, it's also been known for staggering and, and absolutely fantastic uh, technological growth with vibrant business environment. Uh, all of that um, in spite of its existence being threatened uh, every day. So how do you, uh, how do you uh, explain that? How do you, uh, what is the secret behind that incredible growth? Well, um, your question, your description is quite accurate. Um, we thought we were coming uh, many centuries ago to the land of milk of honey. This was uh, promised uh, by God to Moses who took the Israelites from Egypt, from slavery to freedom, and he took them 40 years in the desert, promised them to come to the land of milk of honey. But the reality was a little bit different, uh, not enough milk, not enough uh, honey, no natural resources, uh, a country which is half of it is a desert, uh, we are a country uh, which doesn't have a lot of water. Um, so we came to the promised land, um, uh, but uh, we had uh, to start from zero. We had to uh, manage our life um, based on the fact that uh, we don't have enough resources, not natural resources. Uh, the only uh, natural resources, so to speak, was our uh, uh, people, uh, the human beings. Uh, so we invested in uh, the uh, human capacity. Um, uh, and uh, this is why we uh, started to become um, very good at what we have been doing. Uh, actually, we started to be very good in what we have been forced to do, because when you don't have enough water, you have to think how to, uh, what is the best way to use the um, uh, limited amount of money uh, in water in the best way you can. Uh, so we, for example, many years ago, we invented the drip irrigation, which uses um, in the in a very uh, sufficient um, and very concentrated way uh, the limited amount of money uh, of water that we we have. Uh, so the key word in this um, principle: uh, if you don't have enough, you have to use your imagination, you have to improvise, uh, you have to think out of the box, uh, you have to be creative. Um, so this is what we did. Uh, and that's why uh, we are now in a place uh, in which we are one of the leading countries in innovation, in cybersecurity, mm -hmm. in science and technology. Uh, your other po uh, the other point which you mentioned in the question, uh, surviving in a very hostile um, uh, area. Yes, uh, we had uh, since the very beginning, since 1947 until today, we uh, have been facing uh, those who do not want a Jewish state, namely Israel, in this part of the world, in the Middle East, and they are doing whatever they can in order to uh, destroy us, to annihilate us. Um, so uh, we also had uh, to uh, be strong. And how, you, how, how can you be strong? You have to have a very robust defense industry and a very good army, uh, which are connected together. And this combination of a very advanced and robust defense industry, which produces all the things that we need in order to protect ourselves, to defend ourselves by ourselves, mm -hmm. with a very good army, um, uh, is a winning combination. So you see that in your question there is um, uh, actually the answer to, uh, to it. It's a miracle. On one way, on one hand to survive in a very hostile area, on the other hand to produce and to um, uh, make sure that the society, the, Israeli, the Israelis, will have all they need to function as a democratic and a Jewish state, um, uh, namely a bureaucracy, a, a education system, health system, a financial system, all that uh, it is needed to have a functioning sovereign state. So two things which are contradicting each other, but you can find it only in Israel. And this is why I, can, I call the, the, the whole picture as a miracle. Miracles do not happen. We, people, do it. And we did it. Wonderful. And, and so true. Uh, but what Israeli practices can Croatia perhaps implement um, to boost our startup scene and uh, perhaps our economy? What can we learn from Israel? First of all, um, uh, we are not living on an island, uh, isolated from each other. There should be a more exchange of uh, visits. 
uh, uh, on the political level, but also on the professional level. Uh, we are open for business. Uh, we are open to share our knowledge uh, with anyone, and especially, of course, with Croatia, uh, which is a friendly country to, to Israel. And this is a point uh, or time or a moment which I can say, the Croatia, thank you very much for supporting Israel. Uh, on the, in the international fora, be it in the United Nations or be it in the European Union in Brussels. Uh, Croatia has been always uh, supporting uh, uh, Israel's um, uh, initiative uh, to promote their relations uh, with the European Union and uh, for this uh, we uh, say a big thank you. So uh, more visits, um, uh, more uh, di uh, a bigger, a wider dialogue. Um, we, uh, as I said, are ready to share our knowledge um, but I would like to say that uh, Croatia should not underestimate itself. Only the last couple of weeks I've been visiting uh, Croatian startup companies, which you should be proud of. From Infobip, which is going to open an office in Tel Aviv, or has been um, uh, already uh, opened uh, last week, an office in Tel Aviv based upon my dialogue with the CEO of Infobip, Span, a very a private, a very big private uh, cyber security company which is going to uh, do business with Israel. Uh, I went yesterday to St Stami, um, uh, which is a company which um, uh, provide platforms to educate the uh, high school generation in Croatia, also in the United States, but mainly in Croatia for the 21st century's uh, challenges in AI, robotics, uh, cyber, um, you name it. It's an pl educational platform, which uh, it's mind-boggling, it's fantastic. And I hope that we can cooperate uh, also with, um, or to match them with the company, um, uh, companies in Israel. So Croatia, and there are more. There are more. There are, Croatia should not underestimate uh, itself. Uh, we are partners. We are equals. We have the same uh, political uh, uh, conditions, uh, more or less. Um, we are friendly countries, even though the past 1941-1945 and they had the so-called independent day state of Croatia is in the background but we are facing not forgetting the past but fa facing the future and the future is is um, as good as you want to you want it to be agriculture um, I hope that um, uh, a demonstration farm uh, or center will be built together with, with an Israeli company um, which will teach uh, share its knowledge um, in irrigation to the farmers of Croatia I'm working on this unfortunately in a couple of uh, months I'll have to leave Croatia I will be very sad. I am already sad to leave Croatia, but this is a process uh, which doesn't. It's not dependent on persons. Mm -hmm. I think it's cross a point of no return, and I hope that in the near future this center or centers, maybe more, uh, will be established together with uh, Israeli companies um, and Israeli technology to um, teach to show, to demonstrate uh, the farmers in Croatia how, uh, what is the best way to use water. And there are so many other issues which uh, we can cooperate. So it's not that we are, um, you know, showing off and uh, um, teaching in quotation mark Croatia. No, it's a dialogue. It's an ongoing dialogue. It's a fruitful dialogue and can be a win-win situation. Thank you very much. You've actually answered my next question about Infobit. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, so, Unfortunately, shameful in incidents in Trill, um, which you're probably familiar with, and many other anti-Semitic um, incidents across the Europe uh, and, and uh, the world, are uh, possibly even on the rise. Uh, so what do you see as a key problem with post-World War II uh, generation uh, that's flirting with anti-Semitism? Well, they are not flirting, they are conducting anti-Semitism, not all of them, but um, uh, you cannot flirt. Uh, it's either or, either you f use it or you uh, just uh, run away from it. Um, uh, the saying it's disgusting, it's not true, I don't want to be part of it. Uh, yes, you're right, um, uh, anti-Semitism is on the rise all over the world especially in the United States, but not only in Germany, the place in which the biggest uh, tragedy for the Jewish people happened or started, planned and executed. Um, the anti-Semitism is on the rise in France, in Great Britain, uh, uh, also in Central and Eastern Europe. 
uh, from time to time there is there are some incidents also in Croatia um, uh, uh, yesterday I was notified uh, about the swastika being painted in front of a hotel in one city in Dalmatia in which a group for French uh, uh, Jewish uh, students um, uh, uh, were um, having their vacation uh, they come here they come there uh, every year they support actually the economy of the place and this is the thank you um, which they get by uh, you know uh, painting a swastika uh, in front of the hotel in which they stay this is uh, very ironic um, but coming back to the bigger picture I think that um, uh, we cannot eradicate uh, anti-Semitism. It's a chronic disease. It's like Corona. It's like, um, you know, something which you, unfortunately, and I say it really, uh, it's painful for me to say, you have to live with it, you have to fight it, fight it you have to contain it. And how you do this, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's not a one uh, step um, exercise. Uh, there is no magic solution against it. It's an ongoing process of education, mm -hmm. uh, and you have to educate that anti-Semitism, racism, uh, you can include also um, uh, 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 xenophobia, um, uh, anti-gay uh, sentiments, etc., etc. All those um, uh, things which which are aimed at those who are different than us in the society. This uh, phenomenon must be stopped and you do it by law by implementing law if there are there are laws against it you have to implement it so this is the role of the justice system and the law and order uh, people to identify anti-semitic um, incidents and to uh, press charges against them to indict and this is also the role not less important of politicians uh, to stand up vocally and publicly to say stop it that's not this is totally unacceptable because anti-semitism is not the, the problem only uh, of the jewish community it's a problem of the society in which this anti-semitic anti -Semitic incidents happen it shows that this society is not strong enough this society is in a way sick it's not complete, it's not a healthy society which allows, if it allows, to have this kind of um, uh, incidents to, to happen. So, uh, and and uh, together with law enforcement people, together with the politicians, this is on us, the parents, the grandparents, to educate the children from zero, from age zero, at home. Education starts at home. To talk to the children and to tell them, look, not all of us are the same. There are blacks, there are tolls, there are others, there are Christians, there are Muslims, there are Jews, but everyone is the same. Everyone has, it, has the right to live as the others. So uh, if you see something uh, which um, uh, is not according to your values of equality and tolerance, you have to stand up. Indifference is the key word in uh, uh, giving the anti-Semitism uh, to be the winner. If you look the other way and you say, well, it doesn't concern me, uh, well, it so happened in the Holocaust uh, between 1941 and 1945 all over Europe. People looked the other way. Most of them looked the other way. There were also people who uh, risked their life to help the Jewish people, which Israel is a Jewish state recognize and appreciates but these are the minority the majority should stand up and say enough is enough so as i said it's a chronic disease it's a chronic disease which must must be contained uh, must be fought on a daily daily basis uh, uh, and and this is the role of all of us this is the duty of all of us first and foremost the politician to give us the way they stand up and say, hey, this is un totally unacceptable. Then come the law, law and order, the police, mm -hmm. the justice system, and us as educators, teachers at school, and parents at home. Mm. And how, uh, and are traumas from Holocaust still fresh uh, in, in Jewish society, uh, or is it beginning to uh, be forgotten? No, no, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's still fresh. And, uh, you know, I served as a... Um, as the beginning junior diplomat and then a senior diplomat in Germany and I, I've always asked myself um, how can Jewish people still live in, in Germany in the land of the perpetrators the victims are living continue to live in the land of perpetrators it's still 
something which I don't have an answer for. There are several answers, but one answer which uh, will uh, persuade me to, to accept that uh, the victims or the ancestors of the victims still live in the land of the perpetrators or the, um, the, the children of the perpetrators, um, this is totally still um, uh, not clear to me. Uh, this is not to say that all the Germans are now uh, to be blamed for what happened uh, in the Holocaust, no. We are not blaming it. Uh, we are not doing it and we are not um, uh, telling them in their face. On the contrary, what we say, you are not to be blamed, but you have a responsibility to make sure that what happened then will not uh, reiterated, uh, be it re reiterated or will happen again, um, uh, either against the, the LTBG uh, or, or the others or to the Jews for that matter. Um, Germany for me is a classic positive example of how a society, the society of the perpetrators, took responsibility saying in, and saying every day mea culpa mm -hmm. and doing whatever is necessary and in this issue nothing, I mean there is no end to the ideas in which you um, have to uh, um, come up um, in order to make sure that the memory will still be fresh and vivid. Um, uh, Germany is doing the right thing and I wish other countries uh, in which the, uh, the Holocaust happened with the local collaboration of uh, 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 pro-Nazi um, uh, uh, regimes and, and, uh, and organizations uh, will do the same as uh, Germany is doing. Um, yes, the Shoah, the Holocaust is fading away. Um, the number of survivors are very old now. Uh, every day they are passing away and there will be a time in which no one will stay stay with us who can uh, testify firsthand of what happened there. That's why we have to uh, continue the idea of uh, remembering what happened. Um, Yad Vashem in Israel is doing, uh, uh, together with uh, the Holocaust uh, Memorial Museum in Washington and, uh, and in, in uh, Paris, um, and other centers um, uh, doing together are doing a great job to keep the memory alive. Um, uh, and um, I think um, uh, this uh, should uh, uh, be continued. The Croatia, for example, uh, has its own share by sending um, uh, every year, except for the corona, a delegation of uh, teachers from all over Croatia to Yad Vashem to learn how to teach the issue of uh, the Holocaust to their students. Um, this is something which uh, uh, I congratulate and I urge the government of Croatia to continue um, a new a renewal of the agreement between uh, the um, uh, agency for teaching training in Croatia and Yad Vashem has been signed a couple of weeks ago uh, for another year or for another two years, which is good, uh, not good enough. We have to send more, we have to talk um, uh, more about it, um, uh, and we have to remember because as Primo Levi, the Italian writer, the Jewish Italian writer who survived Auschwitz said, if it happened, it can happen again. Mm. So Israel is, is a land of fascinating differences. Uh, on one hand, the uh, capital of Jerusalem is historically one of the richest uh, cities in the world. Uh, and on the other hand, there is vibrant uh, cosmopolitan Tel Aviv. Um, so what is, what is one thing that you would like everybody to know about Israel <laughs> and uh, you, you don't think that everybody knows? Well, that's a tough one. Um, uh, you cannot describe Israel um, by mentioning one thing. As you said, it's a, it's a multifaceted uh, society, multifaceted uh, country. You can go um, in four hours from the snow in the Mount Hermon in the north to the Red Sea and scuba dive and see one of the uh, most beautiful scenery under uh, water scenery. Uh, so in, in, in on the way you can pass by Tel Aviv, uh, you can pass by the desert. Uh, it's um, very uh, <coughs> colorful and um, uh, so I, I cannot uh, tell you um, uh, uh, one thing, but uh, it's, it's a combination of uh, what you, you said. Tel Aviv is a city which never sleeps, uh, my city. I live in Tel Aviv, have been living in Tel Aviv all my life. 
uh, a city which um, doesn't uh, sleep 24-7 uh, active and everyone can find whatever he wants um, uh, during the day um, or during the night. And Jerusalem, it's uh, with um, like uh, an hour and a half driving time. Uh, it's different. Um, it's more spiritual. It's more, um, you know, making you thinking. Um, so Tel Aviv is in a way hedonistic and Jerusalem is more spiritual. So this is a classic combination which maybe uh, can be used um, uh, uh, to describe Israel uh, of today. But this is only one dimension. Uh, there are many dimensions. We talked about it, um, science and technology uh, and culture. Um, sport, well, not as good as Croatia, but we are, you know, trying uh, to be. Um, uh, we wish that uh, Croatian uh, football players will teach us how to play better football. Uh, even though you can find some uh, some um, some Israeli players uh, playing in uh, in Great Britain, in uh, Germany, uh, but there are a few of them, only a handful of them. Uh, so it's a, it's a combination of, uh, of uh, uh, modernity and history. Um, you take the Bible, uh, the Old Testament, and if you walk in the hills of uh, Jerusalem, uh, the hills of Judea, you can see where um, everything which, is, uh, which you can read in the Bible happened. Uh, so um, uh, um, this is a combination of, of um, uh, things uh, which um, all of them together, and on top of it, Israel being a democratic, modern Jewish state, um, makes Israel very unique, um, making this miracle I was talking about more vivid, more present. In combining those fascinating yeah, 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 differences. Yeah, of course. So what is next in your diplomatic career? <laughs> There's no next. Um, I, uh, in a couple of months, as I said, I'm going back to Israel. I retire. I am going um, to be 67 uh, years old uh, and behind me there are 40 years of serving my country all over the world from Liberia in Africa to Los Angeles in the United States to Bonn, Germany, to China, Beijing, China, to Berlin, Germany, uh, Budapest and now Croatia. A very uh, yeah, interesting uh, um, path of uh, my diplomatic career from being a junior a diplomat to um, uh, be the, on top of uh, the diplomatic service, uh, being an ambassador. Um, yeah, and afterwards uh, there is life after the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, and I'm planning uh, Chapter B, which um, is unplanned now. Whatever comes, comes. But I'm looking forward uh, to going back to, uh, to Israel, to settle down to my family, to renew my contact with old friends, and to live, you know, uh, happily after, ever after. Well, we wish you just that. Thank you. Your Excellency, thank you for, for your time and uh, for this interview. Thank you very much. And all those viewers in Sisak um, I, uh, and the surrounding, I invite you to visit Israel. <coughs> um, in the season, there are flights, uh, regular flights from this year at least, from Zagreb uh, to Tel Aviv, <coughs> excuse me, uh, once a week. But if you uh, uh, cannot go to Israel or uh, you would like um, to be in touch with us, Follow us, um, follow the embassy's activities on the internet, Israel in Croatia and one world in English. Um, and uh, if you have questions, if you want to, to do business with Israel, we at the embassy are at, at your disposal. Write to us, uh, call us, and uh, I'm sure you uh, will be satisfied. And um, uh, I'm sure that you will find Israel um, as fascinating as I try to explain and to describe to you today. Thank you for the interview.